In this video, I'm going to go over not only the answers to the practice sheet number two, but also a little bit about how you find those answers so you can see the procedure as well. So in the first question, uh, we first need to find the total number, number of um, individuals. So you have to take the 396 uh, plus the 557, and you get a total of 953 individuals. Then you can use that total to find the frequency of the genotypes. So if you take, for example, the first one, the red ones, which it tells us are recessive, so 396 divided by that total value again, 953, that's going to be your frequency of your reds, which equals 0.42, and since the reds are recessive, that's the Q squared value. Okay, so that's, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the genotype frequencies. So that would be the 0.42 equals the red, which is the Q squared. Okay, so there's one of your first ones. Uh, the other one you can find is the frequency of the tan. Uh, the tan side individuals we'll get to eventually, so that would be our other genotype frequency. All right, so once you've got the Q square, you can go ahead and find the Q value. Q value will be the square root of 0.42, because 0.42 is the Q, and that equals 0.65. So here for an allele frequency, Q is 0.65. Since Q is 0.65 and Q plus P has to equal 1, that means that P must equal 0.35. So those are the two allele frequencies. Now we can come back and finish the genotype frequencies. P squared is 0.35 squared, that equals 0.12, and 2pq, or 0.65 times 0.35 times 2, is equal to 0.46. So those are all of those for a B. The next question, or C, asks for the number of heterozygotes to be in the population. So we know the frequency of heterozygotes is 0.46 and to find the number you take 0.46 times the total which again back in the beginning I said was 953 so that equals a number of heterozygotes of 438. The phenotype frequencies Remember, the recessive is always going to be your Q squared value for the recessive phenotype because the recessive genotype is the same as the recessive phenotype. So the Q squared value is 0.42. We already found that up above. And then the dominant phenotypes are both the P squared and the 2PQ, so plus 2PQ. Um, in this case, that equals 0.58. Okay, find those up above. And then remember, too, that all of these should equal 1, so 0.42 plus 0.58 does equal 1. Okay, as we continue working down in this problem, letter E says, in the next generation, there are 100 or 1,245 more instructors. If we keep equilibrium, what will this mean for the number of these individuals? So we're going to use the values that we found up above because they need to stay the same. The red, remember, is that recessive frequency, is the Q squared. Q squared we found up above is 0 0.42. 0 0.42 times the... Um, number in the population, 1245, oops, 45, gives us a population of reds, 
or 523. The tan is the dominant one, so up above the dominant was 0.58 times the total again, 1245. 10 ends up being 722. Alright, that's the end of that problem. Moving on to problem 2. In this case, we're given the recessive genotype again at a percentage or frequency of 35% or 0.35. Remember that the recessive frequency is Q squared for the genotype equals 0.35. From there we can figure out everything else. So we want the allylic and genotypic frequencies. If Q squared is 0.35, we take the square root of that to get Q, so Q equals 0.59. From there we can find P, because remember Q plus P has to equal 1, so P is equal to 0.41. From there we can find P squared, so you take P and you square it, that equals 0.17. And then we can also find 2PQ. So we have P and Q over here. 2 times P times Q equals 0.48. On to question 3. This one seems like it might be a little more challenging, but really it's just kind of the same work all over again. These um, frequencies over here you can assume are your P, P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared, even though we don't have dominant or recessive, and technically you could switch these two. But that's the order they're in, so we're going to use that. It gives the frequency of the P squared already. Okay, so if this is the P squared, the frequency is 0 0.49. And we want to find the frequency of each allele. So we're looking for P and Q. So P is going to equal the square root of 0.49, which is 0.7. Q squared is this one up here. Q squared equals 0 0.09. Q is going to equal the square root of that. So Q will equal 0.3. That's all there is to that one. Problem four, cystic fibrosis gives us some information about it. It says it's recessive. One in 2,500 babies have that. So first we can figure out the Q squared frequency, or the frequency of the recessive. So Q squared equals one out of 2,500, which equals 0 .0004. So that's the Q squared. The first question asks for the recessive allele, though, not the recessive genotype. So to find the recessive allele, or Q, you need to find the square root of that, which equals 0 0.02. Next question is the frequency of the dominant allele, which is P. Remember, P plus Q is 1. If Q is 0 0.02, then P must be 0 0.02. 9, 8. And then finally the heterozygous population is 2PQ. We have Q, we have P, multiply those together and take them times 2, and the answer is 0 0.04. On to the last, or last two questions, 5 and 6. 5 is very similar to the M and N question from earlier. We've got two types of alleles, A and B. We're going to leave the O out of the blood type. We need to know which uh, are the allylic frequencies of the population. So we're looking for P and Q. Well, first we can find P squared and Q squared because we know how many are each of those different genotypes. So 200 of them are type A, and that's out of a total of 300. Found that by adding them all together. That's 0.67, and if we assign that being the P squared, remember it doesn't necessarily have to be because we don't really have a dominant or recessive, 
and we'll say that's the p squared, then our p value is the square root of that, which is 0.82. The other value for all b blood is 25 divided by 300, which equals 0 0.08. That's our q squared value. So to find q, we get the square root of that, and that equals 0.28. You could also double check to make sure that they add up to 1 like they should. So there's the allylic frequencies. Now the last question. We have this uh, PTC that is a dominant trait. It's asking for all the potential frequencies, allylic and genotypic, when you're given those that can detect the, uh, the taste. Okay? So 215 individuals could taste it, 65 could not. The 65 that cannot are the recessive ones, and that's the one we want to use. Remember, always try to get the Q value first. So 65 out of a total of 215 individuals cannot taste it. Those are the recessives. That equals 0 0.30, which is your Q squared value. Once you've got Q squared, you can find Q by finding the square root of that. So Q equals 0 0.55. Once you've got Q, you can get P because Q plus P equals 1. So P is 0 0.45. Then you can find P squared by squaring that value equals 0 0.20. And then you can find 2PQ by taking q times p times 2 to get 0 0.50. And that's all the frequencies, the allylic frequencies, the q and the p, and the genotypic frequencies, q squared, p squared, and 2pq.